Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. It's been several weeks since I've had an, uh, an episode released, uh, but I am back. Back and happily, I am able to say we are now running the game on version 161 instead of 131. Unfortunately, I had to completely restart, which is part of the reason why it took so long for another episode to come out. Uh, the other reason was I was on vacation for a little while, but... I am back and I am working on videos once again, um, still in the process of getting this new install of 161 up to date with 131. However, we were able to get up to the first orbital satellite contract. So we're pretty close to on par with uh, where the series is. However, it's going to take probably two episodes to get back on track. Luckily though, I feel this will be very worth it since we now have the mod Kerbalism installed, which adds a whole wealth of realism to the game and is an extra challenge, is extra fun. I'm just excited for the future about that one. Uh, but back to the footage on hand, we are of course starting over, so that means more, uh, more sounding rockets. Um, luckily, sounding rockets we won't have to do a whole lot of. I am... I think there's maybe maybe four? Maybe four in this episode? Um, and next episode we will be working on satellites, so sounding rockets won't be sticking along for very long, do not worry. Another part of the, uh, the reason that it took so long for me to get another episode out was because of how many things went wrong with installing 161. The editor was freezing like crazy, the physics were also freezing like crazy, procedural parts was mostly to blame for it, and it took a while to realize that there was actually an update for real fuels which fixed the issue mostly. However, procedural nose cones are still giving me a lot of grief, and I don't know why. Apart from that, a few other mods not really working correctly and needing to get a different version of them and updating and the whole the whole plethora of things that come along with installing RP1 or 0 with the Realism Overhaul in this game is kind of a nightmare at times, but we have officially a working game now, which means we can continue on steadily. Uh, the editor isn't freezing, which is great. Everything is working perfectly fine. So once again, hopefully, I'm assuming this is going to be the last time we're going to have to restart. And we'll be looking forward instead of jumping right back again. Now the contracts we're completing right here. Uh, this was the third sounding rocket, which actually passed the Carmen line and got us some nice science, actually. I believe we got science from that contract as well as while completing the contracts, whether uh, contracts would be available to us. I spent a lot of time um, the past few weeks with with sounding rockets, um, not just launching them. Like if I had just launched them normally, it wouldn't have taken any time at all. But I decided um, to take a while to learn KOS a little bit more. So I've learned some things in KOS uh, that I did not learn before, such as um, being able to uh, get fuel levels and being able to register thrust and being able to put name tags on the engines and then call those engines inside of the script itself. Um, a lot of stuff that I decided to waste a bunch of time on. Um, however, it was really fun. Um, it probably contributed to uh, me not having this video up in a timely manner, uh, but I, it was a lot of fun. Um, I had built this one plane here to help with science, um, and you'll see here one thing that Kerbalism does is it overhauls the science aspect of things. So it's no longer you have a temperature, you click, you, you just click it once and you get the science transmitted back. You actually have to wait five minutes. And it's not like you can get into a situation like flying low above the shores. You click it and then it just takes five minutes for it to transmit no in order to get all the science from it you actually have to stay in that same situation for five minutes 
So this prevented me from being able to get a lot of science out of just sounding rockets because these sounding rockets, their flight isn't five minutes long. It's usually less than five minutes. And five minutes is the, I think that's the smallest amount of time for a, a science experiment. Apart from the uh, film return camera, I think that one takes the least amount of time. I think that it wants one minute. However, it only works in space, unless I'm mistaken. But this meant until I was able to uh, send a, a sounding rocket outside of the atmosphere um, for five minutes, so it took five minutes for it to re-enter the atmosphere, I wouldn't be able to get any science out of it. Even telemetry analysis is five minutes. Um, so that meant I had to take this aircraft here um, and put a few science experiments on it. So a crew report, telemetry, temperature, and I think barometer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you, I was able to go to two biomes before having to come back and land. I could have probably went for three on this um, this flight, but I did end up uh, landing it, refueling it, and taking it off again to get the third biome around Florida, which is the forests. Um, so we got three biomes of those four experiments, um, which gave us pretty much the majority of our science so far. And that should be the last time that we'll have to use this aircraft other than just flying it around for fun, because it is extremely maneuverable. Now for the sounding rockets previously, despite leaving the Carmen line, or not leaving, um, flying above or crossing, we'll go with crossing, crossing the Carmen line, it, we never left the atmosphere, technically. It was only about 120 kilometers. So this rocket here, which is sort of reminiscent of the, um, the first sounding rocket of the 131, a few episodes, maybe like 10 episodes back, um, with that sort of wasted, curved design with the shiny metal. I liked that design, so I tried to put it in here. However, in, this one didn't really look very good. That first stage didn't look very good, but it was functional. And it got us way into space, up to over 200 kilometers, which it passed a lot of uh, uncrewed altitude and speed records, as well as completing the contract we had it for, which is a suborbital return. Um, which could, that got us a lot of money and a lot of science, which was very cool, very cool indeed. Now, as the sounding rocket came back and landed on Earth, there was only one contract in the way of us and orbital rocketry of satellites, and that was the 3,000 kilometers downrange contract. And luckily, um, I was able to do this quite easily. However, this take this took forever because I decided I wanted to make a KOS script that would run the whole thing, staging and everything, so I could just sit back and watch it go. And let me tell you, I uh, it took hours for me to do this. Um, maybe because I'm bad at it, but I like the end result. It was I was able to look at the information on the screen, which gave me cool info being updated a few times every second and I was able to just sit back and watch the rocket take me just over 3,000 kilometers down range halfway to Africa practically um, and luckily this as I mentioned before I uh, was able to collect science as well because I stayed up in the atmosphere for over 10 minutes looks like 14 minutes or so before I re-entered the atmosphere after leaving it and this was perfect because some of the experiments actually take 10 minutes and that meant I would be in a, um, a single science situation. So in this case, it was space low. Yeah, in space low above water. Um, I was able to stay in that for 10 minutes to collect the science for this. And I'm about 99% sure that's how that works. If it doesn't work that way and I'm just being silly let me know in the comments below a few tests in uh in crash in the editor and i was able to successfully get this script up and running a lot of it happened to do with with uh staging based on thrust the script knew that the engine cut off if the threat cut off uh, if the thrust cut off and that's how i would tell it to stage and whatnot the science of course i had to collect on my own 
But the sounding rockets have gone as follows. Alpha was just a first launch. I think it was just a, a solid booster that needed to go 50 meters per second up. Um, Bravo and Charlie, I think, were the same design. And I think Bravo just didn't work. Um, and they were designed to get up to 50 kilometers. I believe Delta was the one that... Oh, actually, no, 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 no. I'm mistaken. Bravo got up to 50 kilometers. Charlie broke the uh, Carmen line. Delta was the one previously with the weird first stage. That one got us out of the atmosphere and returned safely with the parachute. And Echo, which is the next one, is the one that got us 3,000 kilometers downrange, as you can see here. And this one, I actually flew like three or four times, completing some sounding rocket contracts just to get a little bit more funds. And I actually have sounding rocket Foxtrot, which is the next one, um, fully constructed. It weighs too much and it's too tall for the editor, but it has enough Delta V to reach low Earth orbit. And I'm wondering if there is a possibility I can make it actually orbit the Earth. And I guess I'll find out um, as soon as I'm able to work on that contract. Unfortunately, funds are quite tight. Accepting the, um, the contract for a first orbital flight means that all of the sounding rocket contracts will always go away because as it says, um, once you go orbital, you never go back or something like that. Um, so that'll, that'll mean once I accept that contract, I have two years to actually get like orbital worthy. And it costs about 75,000 funds to upgrade the, the launch pad to be able to hold this rocket that I, that I created. Um, and it would, I think, I think it only gives us 80,000 funds to like when we accept the contract. So pretty much all of the funds it's accepting is going to go into that launch pad. And whatever I have left is funds for the program itself and funds for constructing the rocket, which I think is only like 5,000 funds, but still money is going to be really tight. So that rocket, if I choose to go with that rocket, at least, will pretty much have to work or will go bankrupt. Um, but I don't, I'm not really too worried about it. What I'm going to do for next episode is build a few different designs for um, our first satellite. I, most likely I'll go with something similar to what we saw already in the 131 series. And we'll test them out in whichever one works the most reliably and is the most... I don't know, looks nicest, is the one that we'll see next episode. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for next weekend. Um, it might be, it might be next weekend, it might be the week after that, depending on how much time I have to put to this, because, I mean, knowing me, I'll probably spend a long time trying to get KOS to bring the whole rocket to orbit. Um, <laughs> so, no promises on an episode next week, possibly the week after, I'm sorry for this waiting uh, so long, but troubleshooting and having fun took up a lot of time in between the last episode and this one. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for stopping by, and peace out. Peace out.